Greetings fellow Get to Laylians. Jeff Weinberger coming at you here with a new tutorial. I'd like to talk about a good old song today called Operator by Jim Croce. He was an incredible singer-songwriter, died way too young. He died at the age of 30. Um, he and his guitar player and a couple other folks were in an airplane that had crashed. He was on his way from one concert to another. That was back in 73. Um, he had a huge smash hit with this song in 1972. I was all of 10 years old, but it was hugely uh, influential on me. And that album um, that came out in 72 had so many great hits on it. Um, altogether, I believe he had five albums, but he really struck gold with that one. It made number 14 in the top 20 charts of uh, that year, August of 72, I believe. And uh, unfortunately, he had died just shortly after that in 73. Incredible singer-songwriter. He was from Philly, an Italian-American guy from Philadelphia. And uh, he was kicking around for a number of years since the late 60s and uh, finally broke through in the early 70s. And he's kind of one of those iconic 70s um, soft rock folk singer-songwriters that uh, wasn't doing the loud hard rock thing like Zeppelin and Sabbath and Hendrix and... Janis Joplin's bluesy kind of thing. He was more of an acoustic guy. And um, there were a lot of artists at that time doing that sort of music. That was the golden age of uh, kind of the soft rock, folk rock thing. And uh, it's special to me because I was just a formidable young 10-year-old. And then 11, 12, 13, that's when you really um, develop your tastes in music and your impressions about art and many things. That's for, Those are your formative years right there. And so that's the kind of music that was on the radio, the AM radio, and my mom's uh, yellow station wagon that she carted us around in in the suburbs there. And uh, it was just really cool to come hear stuff like that coming out of the radio in the car and uh, lots of other things of the time. So go ahead and do yourself a favor and look up the Billboard Top um, 100 pop hits of 1972 in August of 72 you'll get an idea of the sort of stuff my young impressionable ears were taking in at that time it's just uh incredible music we still to this day it's way in the future now 2023 but we're still so influenced by that both people that are as old as I am uh, people that are younger and even people that are much younger students of mine that I uh, teach uh, they just tell me how much they love 70s music and how it's uh really uh, something that they, they respect. So let's get right into it. I'm here to show you the finger picking pattern and the basic chords for the intro and the verse. Um, Croce played it differently, you know, there were different performances that they recorded of him on TV. Um, I believe on YouTube right now you can find about three or four, uh, including Midnight Special, that 70s TV show. Um, and also he was on Dick Cavett and Johnny Carson and all that. But you can watch him and you can see that sometimes he used a G bar chord. But other times he used a G open chord. And I chose to use the open chord. I kind of like the sound of that better uh, with finger picking. So I used the open chord. But do know if you catch one of those videos, um, you might see him sometimes playing a, a G bar chord. Um, his uh, sidekick, Maury... Um, Mulefelsen, he was a great guitar player too. He did all the fills, so when you listen to this song, you're going to hear all those great, like, um, little sixths and things like that, little hammer on, pull off y, pull off -y things. Um, he does all the fills, but Jim Croce is the guy that just lays it down with the solid folk finger picking. So the chord progression goes G, B minor, A minor, and then this funky D, which is called D over F sharp. So G is your standard 3, 2, 0, 0, 0, 3 cowboy chord. But if you want to do the bar chord, that would work. You just uh, use the same finger picking pattern I'm about to show you, but with this bar chord. And that would be 3 5 5 4 3 3. They're uh, almost interchangeable, these chords. So you've got your G, then you get your B minor, and I like to do that as a bar chord. I believe Jim Croce did too. And that would be X. You don't play anything on the low E string, but you do play 2 4 4 3 2. You could get away with a non-barred B minor, but barring is the way to get this sound, to get that bass note for the finger picking. A minor, which is that same B minor chord down a whole step. 0, 2, 2, 1, 0 with the 6 string X'd out, so really it's X, 0, 
2210. And then that funky uh, D over F sharp I was talking about, million ways to finger that. Uh, I saw Croce in um, most of his videos do it this way with his first, second, and third. Now it would be 2X. You have to mute out that A string. 0, that's your D string. 2, 3, and X. You don't do anything on your high E string. So it's really just a 3 finger chord with 4 active strings. Very common chord you hear in all kinds of music. Um, you can finger it other ways. You could use your second, third, and fourth fingers, as I believed I did. That's usually how I do it with fingers two, three, and four. Uh, some guys wrap their thumb around. You can do it that way, too. You can use your thumb to play the uh, sixth string second fret, and then use your first and third fingers for the others, and many other combinations. You figure it out yourself. I'll, I want you to get in there and uh, see what you can do. By the way, in the uh, description box below, I will leave lots of uh, information about Jim Croce. There's so much to talk about, but I want to show you how to play this song rather than go on and on about the music history aspect of it. But the guy was really interesting, read an, led an interesting life, and uh, left such a big mark with his music. So I'll leave some biographical information down below for you. I'll link, of course, to videos of this song so you can hear and see him play it live uh, on TV. And he did play live. You know, a lot of groups back then lip-synced. There were groups that um, didn't really play their instruments and didn't really sing when they appeared in um, TV performances and stuff. But he was the real deal. Him and Maury uh, definitely went out there and uh, laid it down. They stood and they delivered. Um, there was bass in this song. There's piano too. But uh, we're concentrating on Jim Croce's finger-picked guitar part. All right, speaking of which, let's learn that pattern. 